Arike looked at her mother-in-law with a steely gaze, her voice unwavering as she spoke. Queen Adebimpe, I have tolerated your wickedness for far too long. But no more. I will not allow you to come between me and my peace of mind any longer. As you can see, I have a bundle of joy to take care of. Arike said, referring to a newborn child. Adeleke, we are leaving this village and starting anew in a different place. You can choose to come with us or you can choose to stay behind with your mother. The choice is yours. Arike added firmly. Arike stood before her husband, her heart heavy with the weight of the decision he was about to make. She looked into his eyes, searching for any flicker of hope that he would choose her and their newborn baby over his mother. But all she saw was doubt and indecision. Arike, I don't know what to do, her husband said, his voice filled with confusion. Can you please give me some time to think about this? Because my mother might be difficult, but she's still my mother, and I can't just leave her alone, especially not now that she's so sick. Prince Adeleke said to Arike. Tears welled up in Arike's eyes as she realized that her husband was not ready to make a choice. She knew then that she had to take matters into her own hands. She immediately carried her baby and started heading out of the room. Prince Adeleke tried to stop her, but she refused, and with the help of the royal guards, she returned home. Arike started packing her things in tears, because she was certain her husband was never going to be free from his mother's grip. As she kept packing, she suddenly remembered that she had to pay her father-in-law, the king, a visit to explain her decision, and for him to see his grandchild before she left. Because the king treated her like his daughter, therefore he deserved to be informed. So, she decided to visit him the following day. Prince Adeleke, on the other hand, took his sick mother back to the palace and also informed the king of the arrival of his first grandchild. King Adedire was overjoyed. May the gods be praised, he kept repeating and dancing. How is Arike? Is she in good health? The king asked. Prince Adeleke assured him that Arike is strong and in good shape. King Adedire was very happy to hear this and immediately ordered five palace guards to fetch the freshest fruits and take it to the new mother. He also informed the royal mates to prepare enough catfish pepper soup and take it to Arike. Adeleke, please make sure after Arike and the baby have rested enough, you bring them to the palace to see me. Adeleke thanked his father for the gifts and assured him he would bring Arike and the baby over as soon as they are done resting. Prince Adeleke returned home with all the gifts from his father. Arike marveled at how much love her father-in-law constantly shows her. At least she had someone to be thankful for, she thought. Can we talk? Adeleke asked his wife. If your talk has nothing to do with living with your daughter and I, then I have nothing to discuss with you, Adeleke. Arike replied and stormed off. Arike fed her daughter and took a well-deserved rest. The following morning, her friends came to rejoice with her and see the baby. They were all happy for their friend and it made Arike feel so special. She felt like sharing the woes that had been going on in her life with them but decided against it. Later in the evening, Arike went to the palace to see her father-in-law, the king. The king was surprised to see Arike and the baby. Are my eyes deceiving me? You two shouldn't be outside so quickly. You need a lot of rest. Arike greeted the king and placed the baby in his arms. King Adedire cuddled the baby joyfully and turned to say something to Arike when he saw her crying bitterly. He was shocked to see her in tears and asked what the problem was. Arike poured out her heart to him telling him about the series of abuse she had endured at the hands of her mother-in-law. She recounted the cruel words, the harsh treatments, and the constant belittling that had made her life difficult. Arike also told King Adedire how she practically had no husband all through her pregnancy, how Prince Adeleke watched while his mother bullied her. Your Majesty, I appreciate everything you've done for me. 
it is very unfortunate we have to part this way. But I am tired. I am tired of being a spectator in my own life. Adeleke is not married to me. He is married to his mother. Arike cried. King Adedire couldn't believe his ears. He thought his son had a good marriage. He tried to console Arike and assure her he will resolve the situation. But Arike refused. He told the king that there was nothing to solve because right now, Queen Adebimpe is pretending to have a terminal illness, which she strongly believes is just a new plot to snatch her husband further away from her. You mean Queen Adebimpe connived with the palace physician to fake her illness? King Adedire couldn't come to terms with the fact that his wife could be that wicked or capable of such deceits. It was almost unfathomable, but as he looked at the determined look on his daughter-in-law's face, he couldn't help but wonder if there was some truth to her claims. On the other hand, he thought maybe Arike was just frustrated based on how mean her mother-in-law had been to her in the past. But he wasn't going to dismiss her observation, especially since Arike told him she was planning to leave the kingdom. I will never be a party to seeing someone's child in so much pain. You should be basking in the joy of mother Udarike and taking a well-deserved rest. But here you are because of this unfortunate situation. On behalf of my son and his mother, I apologize to you. King Adediri said. He gave the baby back to Arike and pleaded with her to give him two days. Two days to get to the bottom of the situation and afterwards... It wouldn't stop her from leaving, if that was what she wanted. Arike was adamant at first, but due to the respect she had for her father-in-law, she felt two days was not too much to spare. He thanked her, and a few minutes later, Arike left the palace with her baby. King Adedire sat on his throne, his face a mask of disbelief and anger. He couldn't believe what he had just heard from his daughter-in-law, Arike. He decided to confront his wife about this matter. However, he didn't want to jump to conclusions or believe the worst of her without giving her a chance to explain. But as he processed this shocking revelation, King Adidiri felt a wave of betrayal wash over him. How could his own wife stoop so low as to manipulate her own family for her selfish desires? The thought of it alone left a bitter taste in his mouth. King Adedire decided immediately to confront his wife. He went to Queen Adebimpe's quarters and he found her lying sick on the bed. As he entered into her room, Queen Adebimpe's eyes filled with concern at the serious expression on her husband's face. King Adedire wasted no time in getting to the point. Is it true, Adebimpe? He asked, his voice laced with a mixture of anger and ought. Did you truly conspire with the palace physician to fake this illness just to keep our son by your side? King Adedire asked his wife firmly. The queen's eyes widened in surprise at the accusation. What kind of accusation is this, my king? Queen Adebimpe replied after faking a cough. My king, I swear to you, I am truly ill, she insisted, her voice trembling with emotion. I would never never deceive you in such a manner. But King Adediri was not convinced. He could sense something wasn't right. Tell me the truth, Adebimpe. The king urged his wife, his voice softer now, yet no less intense. Tell me the truth, or I will find out another way. I swear it. Still, Queen Adebimpe maintained her innocence, her eyes pleading with the king to believe her. King Adediri left her room, and Queen Adebimpe began to panic. If the truth comes out, I will lose everything, she thought to herself. She wondered who might have spilled to the king. Around night time, she summoned one of her royal maids to discreetly get the palace physician down to her chamber. As soon as the maid left to carry out the queen's instruction, she saw the palace guards leading the palace physician to the king's court. The maid immediately returned to Queen Adebimpe to inform her about what she saw. In the king's court, 
The palace physician was questioned by the king. King Adedire asked if his wife was truly sick. But the physician stuck to his lies, claiming that Queen Adebimpe was indeed suffering from a terminal illness and that he was doing everything in his power to treat her. The king persuaded him to tell the truth or face a serious consequence, but he was adamant. All right, since you are very sure of your truth, be prepared to swear before the sacred oracle of our land, King Adedire said to the physician. I don't understand, my king, the palace physician said with a shaky voice. What is there not to understand? All you need to do is prove your innocence to me by swearing before the oracle. Or, have you been feeding me lies? King Adedire thundered. No, my king, I dare not deceive you. The physician quickly answered. The king saw it all in the physician's mannerism that something was wrong. But at least with this solution, he hoped to get more answers. Late in the middle of the night, Queen Adebimpe snuck out of the palace and went over to the physician's house. She asked him to tell her everything that happened in the king's court. He told her everything and how the king said he was going to swear before the oracle. Queen Adebimpe was shocked that her husband proposed such a thing, but she hid the shock quickly before the physician. I cannot swear before the oracle, your majesty, he whispered, his voice filled with fear. Whoever lies before the oracle is instantly struck dead by the gods, he added. Queen Adebimpe looked at him, her eyes flashing with anger. You fool, she hissed. The king will not dare to carry out his threats. He is too weak-willed to go against me. But the physician was not convinced. He knew that the king was serious about him swearing before the gods and the oracle held great power and to lie before it was to risk not only his own life but that of his family. Queen Adebimpe assured him he wouldn't be swearing before the oracle. The next morning, Prince Adeleke came over to see his sick mother and spent time with her as usual. But he was surprised to see Queen Adebimpe looking so sad. He asked her what the problem was and she explained how the king accused her and the palace physician of faking her illness. She also added that the king said the physician would swear before the oracle. How can your father think such of me? I know he never liked me, but this is just too much. Queen Adebimpe cried in pretense. Prince Adeleke was very angry. He immediately stormed out of his mother's room, heading to the king's chamber. Queen Adebimpe smiled as soon as her son left the room because this was exactly what she wanted. She felt her son would be able to sway the king from his decision. As soon as Prince Adeleke saw his father, he screamed, Father, why do you believe such lies against mother? Someone is trying to bring confusion into our family and you're allowing it, Prince Adeleke added. King Adedire sighed. Adeleke, I am your father. I would never decide on something like this without a good reason. What good reason could possibly make you doubt your sick wife? Because by asking the palace physician to swear, it's a big slap on mother's face, father, Prince Adeleke fired back. It is not only the physician that will be swearing before the oracle. Your mother also has to prove her innocence. The king said, glaring at Prince Adeleke. Adeleke had a huge shock on his face. He couldn't believe the bombshell his father just dropped. You mean mother would swear before the oracle? Father, you are unbelievable. Prince Adeleke said with so much frustration in his voice. But King Adedire was resolute. He believed that the queen should have nothing to fear if she was truly innocent. Reluctantly, the prince left for his mother's chamber. He gave Queen Adebimpe the news and she almost had an heart attack. Prince Adeleke tried to calm his mother and after she was a bit settled, he advised her to swear before the oracle and shame the king. Mother, I know you are very angry and I understand, 
but you must swear before the oracle and prove father wrong. He said softly. The discussion sent Shiva down Queen Adebimpe's spine. She thought her son speaking with her husband would stop him from making the physician swear before the oracle. She didn't anticipate that the king would include her in the innocence test. The next day, as the sun rose over the village, King Adedire summoned the chief priest of the village, a powerful man who communed with the spirits and the gods. He instructed the priests to make the queen and the physician swear before the village's feared oracle, a test that could only be taken by those who spoke the truth. The queen and the palace physician were summoned before the oracle to swear their innocence, but only after they had been given one last chance to come clean. The tension in the room was palpable as the priests listed the implications of lying before the oracle, urging Queen Adebimpe and the physician to tell the truth. But Queen Adebimpe remained silent, her eyes cold and unyielding. The prince, standing by his mother's side, looked at his father with a mixture of anger, disgust and disappointment, unable to believe that his father would doubt his own mother. As the priest turned to the physician and called him forward to swear before the oracle, the man's face grew pale with fear. He knew that if he swore falsely, the oracle would surely punish him for his deceit. Desperate, he approached the queen and pleaded with her to admit the truth, to spear him from the wrath of the oracle. But Queen Adebimpe only smiled smugly and assured the physician that the king would not carry out his threats, pretending to be confident in her own manipulative abilities. She made herself believe that she held all the power in this situation. As the physician knelt before the oracle, the chief priest began the sacred incantations. It was a moment of truth, a moment that would determine the fate of the queen and the physician. In a moment of desperation, the physician stood up and faced the king. I will confess your majesty, he said, his voice trembling. The queen and I conspired to deceive you. She is not truly ill, the physician cried. The king's eyes widened in shock and disbelief. He turned to the queen, his heart heavy with sorrow. Is this true, Adebimbe? He asked. The queen remained silent, unable to meet her husband's gaze. She knew that her deception had been uncovered and that there was no turning back now. The king's heart sank as he heard the physician reveal the depths of the deception that had taken place within the palace walls. His daughter-in-law, Arike, was right, after all. King Adedire felt a mix of anger, sadness and betrayal but also a sense of relief that the truth had finally come to light. Queen Adebimpe's facade crumbled as the physician's words echoed through the throne room. She stood there, exposed and vulnerable, her eyes laid bare for all to see. Some of the mates that heard all that had happened gave two of the other king's wife the gist. The queens all rushed to hear what was happening for themselves with their ears placed behind the walls of the throne room. Prince Adeleke looked at his mother, in shock, unable to reconcile the woman he had known with the deceitful figure before him. Mother, this can't be true. Please say something to defend yourself. Prince Adeleke glared at his mother. Your father caused it all. I was lonely, abandoned by my husband. He married not one. But ten wives after me, Adeleke, Queen Adebimpe cried. And what is that supposed to mean, Adebimpe? Have I ever declined any of your requests? Or have I ever shut my door on you? Don't make me angrier than I already am, King Adedire thundered. But how does any of this justify you destroying my home, mother? Arike warned me about you, but I didn't listen. I am disappointed. Prince Adeleke cried. Keep your mouth shut, Adeleke, because even with everything your mother has done, you are the disappointment I see here. Are you not aware that once you get married, especially to someone 
that loves you, such person and your children should take priority in your life. No one is saying you shouldn't love your mother. But you now have a new immediate family of your own. And they come first, no matter what. King Adedire told Prince Adeleke loud and clear. The king thanked the chief priest and dismissed him. He also stripped the palace physician of his royal position. He then told the palace guards to throw him out of the palace and quickly fetch Arike, his daughter-in-law. Throughout this series of events, Queen Adebinke kept weeping like a child. She begged her son for forgiveness, but he couldn't even look at her. Adeleke, my precious son, you are the only one I have. Please don't hate me. I am sorry for everything, she cried. Mother, pray to the gods that Arike is willing to forgive me. Or else, me hating you will be the least of your worries, Prince Adeleke screamed. Few minutes later, Arike arrived with the baby in her hand. She noticed the mood in the palace. Her mother-in-law and her husband had a sober look, while her father-in-law, the king, wore a look of disappointment. But immediately the king saw Arike, he smiled at her and requested he wanted to carry his grandchild. Arike, my daughter, King Adedire began, I have called you here today to apologize on behalf of my family for the way you have been treated. Adebingbe, it is time for you to admit your mistakes and ask for forgiveness, he added. Queen Adebingbe hung her head in shame as she approached Arike. I am deeply sorry for the way I have treated you, Arike, she said tearfully. I was afraid. I was afraid of losing my son's love and attention to you, and I let my fear cloud my judgment. Please, find it in your heart to forgive me. Arike was taken aback by her mother-in-law's apology, but found it difficult to forgive her. I don't know how to accept your apology, Queen Adebingbe, because... You also apologized to me before the wedding, only for you to destroy my wedding dress after. Didn't you? Arike said softly. Yes, I did, and I am sorry, Queen Adebimpe admitted. King Adedire and Prince Adeleke exclaimed loudly when they heard her admit she destroyed the wedding dress. Mother, you really did that? You must have enjoyed watching me defend your honor foolishly. I can't believe this. Prince Adeleke glared at his mother. I did it because I love you, Adeleke. I didn't mean to hurt anyone, but I realize now that I was wrong to try to keep your attention to myself. The truth is, I was not ready to accept another woman into your life, but I see now that I was wrong. Please, Adeleke and Arike, forgive me. Queen Adebimpe cried bitterly. That is where you have been wrong. I never for once thought of taking your place in Adeleke's life. No woman can ever replace the position of a mother in a child's heart. You as his mother can't also fill the place of his wife. I am his wife, but you are his mother. We hold different parts in his life. Arike said calmly to her mother-in-law. I salute your wisdom, Arike. May your days be long, King Adedire said firmly. Prince Adeleke, who had been standing silently, stepped forward before Arike. My dear wife, I am sorry. I am sorry for not being there for you when you needed me the most, he said, his voice filled with regret. I should have believed you when you told me about my mother's mistreatment, and I should never... I've neglected you while you were pregnant. Please forgive me, Arike. I am sorry. Tears welled up in Arike's eyes as she listened to Adeleke's heartfelt apology. His gaze filled with regret. She felt a surge of emotion as her husband continued to speak. Despite everything that had happened, she still loved him deeply. I forgive you, she whispered, reaching out to grasp his hand. But... I cannot stay here any longer, Adeleke. We need to leave this place and start anew, like I told you when we were at the midwife's house. Prince Adeleke nodded, 
his heart heavy with guilt. I understand you, my love. We will leave this kingdom and begin afresh elsewhere. I am ready to go wherever you want. Adeleke responded with so much enthusiasm. One more thing, you should thank his majesty. Because if not for him, our daughter and I would be long gone, Arike said to Prince Adeleke. Adeleke prostrated before his father and Arike also thanked King Adediri. The king asked Arike to hug her mother-in-law. She hesitated a little before finally embracing Queen Adebimpe, who was still sobbing. Arike then placed her daughter in her mother-in-law's hands. And so, the next day, Prince Adeleke and Arike packed their belongings and set off on a new journey with their daughter. They settled in a distant land, far away from their former base. A year passed and Arike discovered she was pregnant once again. This time, Prince Adeleke was by her side every step of the way, taking care of her and showering her with love and affection. One day, Queen Adebimpe came to visit her son and daughter-in-law. Arike was initially apprehensive, but to her surprise, the queen treated her with so much kindness and respect. It was clear that Queen Adebimpe had truly changed and was trying to make amends for her past behavior. After Arike gave birth to a healthy baby, she and Prince Adeleke decided to return to his father's kingdom to introduce their child to the king and Queen Adebimpe. A grand feast was held in their honor and the entire kingdom rejoiced at the arrival of the new heir. King Adedire watched with pride as his son and daughter-in-law presented their child to him. He was grateful that they had returned and forgiven the past. Arike smiled at Prince Adeleke, her heart full of happiness as she held their baby in her arms. And so, a new chapter began for Prince Adeleke, Arike and their growing family. Love and forgiveness had triumphed over past misunderstandings and peace reigned once again in the royal palace. The king smiled, knowing that his family was now united and stronger than ever before. Let me know your thoughts on all you've learned in this video. Thank you so much for watching. Kindly like, share and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.